Hey everybody, it's your girl here, Madison J, and I am sitting here with the beautiful, amazing, phenomenal, extraordinary, magnificent playwriter, author, blogger, world-renowned extraordinaire, the Sharon Monet. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank I you so amazing. much. I am amazing. Thank you for having me here. Yes, thank you for coming. I, I love this lady, guys. She is everything I said and more, and I don't even think I summed it up enough for the Aww. essence that you are. I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you. So if you guys don't know by now, which I'm pretty sure you do, we are in Hollywood, California, to here to talk about your play. Yes. Get out of your own way. I feel like we should vogue when we say that, like get out of your own way. <laughs> yes. So Sharon has worked with so many people in the business, uh, including myself. We've been building for about, wow, two years now. Yes. And she's a dear sister to me, and she's worked with everyone in front of the scenes, behind the scenes, secretly ghostwriting. But she's done it all. Uh, she's experienced so much in her life, and so now she's here with her play that's coming out, Get Out of Your Own Way. So let's start with the title of that. Let's start with that. What does that mean to you? Not being your biggest critic. Mm. Literally. It's literally a title. I, I often say getting out of your own way may sound good, mm -hmm. but it's a very painful process. Ooh, give me, a, give me that. <laughs> give me that. Yes, I love that. It's a very painful process simply because no one and everyone is afraid to look in the mirror at themselves. Mm. So get out of your own way really makes you look at that person, that woman, that man, that child that you see in the mirror and stand in that truth. Stand in it. Stand Own it. all the way. Yes, you have to. Because that's the only way that you're going to get out of your own way. If not, you're going to continue to go around in circles. And we know what circles do. Just repeat over and over and over. So you know what? Let's start at the beginning okay. of your circle, the beginning of your evolution. Who are you? How did you get started? And what? Because I believe our purpose is embedded in us. Yes. Like when we come into this lifetime, you know, I'm a spiritual journalist, we gotta throw some stuff like that in there. there but you when go. you come into this lifetime, we all come here with a unique design, divine purpose that we're here on a mission to fulfill. Yes. So that's why we have things that we like, that's why we have things that just we, we love, that we're in tune with. Tell us about you and how you got started in writing. I got started in writing because I was a child that didn't like talks. Mm. I always felt, and still to this day, at, at some you know some points, is that if I speak, who cares? So if someone says, "How are you?" If I really told you, would you really care? Mm. Or would you do anything with that information? Right. So instead of me always telling. I would write it down because I always felt as though my pen and paper couldn't judge me. Oh wow, I like that. My pen and paper couldn't judge me. Yes. I like that. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Put that. My pen and paper couldn't. That's a hey. It, yes. Hey. That's the, that's, that, that is the start of mm -hmm. me writing and I've been writing since the age of 14. And that's a part of your divine purpose in this yes. lifetime. And it also helped you get out of your own way. Absolutely. So what are some of the obstacles that you have faced? Uh, give me a few personally and then we'll go into professionally. Okay. So we'll start with personally. Uh, what are a few of the obstacles that you faced that were a struggle for you to get out of your own way? One, going through a divorce. Mm -hmm. Because with me and the, the different type of parenting and life I wanted for my children, I did not want to be a single mother. Mm -hmm. So going through a divorce for me was very hard because it put me right into the life that I didn't want. Right. So that challenge really made me grow up mm -hmm. and live the life or give the opportunities for my boys as if we were a two-parent household. Mm -hmm. Then my other biggest challenge was surviving a heart attack. Oh, wow. And a lot of that was due to stress because of the, you know, the divorce and everything that I was dealing with. And at that time, I wasn't writing. So when you don't Wait, let's, write... Let's talk a little bit about that because when you're not walking in that divine purpose... Yes, you fall down. You will, you will not... Oh, I'm getting chills. You crumble. Right. Like you, like literally, you, you have to find that essence of what you're, what you're here to do in this lifetime. Yeah. So like you said, you weren't writing, continue. Yeah, so I wasn't writing, so in me not writing, mm -hmm. there the stress came. Mm. There the anxiety came. There the depression came. There the issues came. And then the hospital came. Mm. 
and see the order and then yep. your body your body will give you those signs it'll knock softly at first and mm -hmm. if you're not listening until it knocks you down it's absolutely but when you get that knockdown I, isn't that knockdown a blessing that knockdown is a blessing because in that knockdown and in that moment of me crying on the floor you know now being a single mom wearing a heart monitor facing that mirror yes because I had to look fears. at me. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, it's not just looking at the mirror. In that moment, I was looking at my two children. Mm. Who was looking at me like, Mommy, what are we going to do? So what happened? Where did you go from there? For single moms out there who are, oh, this is a moment of inspiration. Look at that. <laughs> what did you do? My oldest son, Christopher, gave me my composition book. And he said, Mommy, write about it. And I that composition him. book turned into my first book, My Solid Story. Mm. And the journey hasn't stopped since. It hasn't stopped since. I look at me, I'm getting chills. Yep. Look at that. That's so inspiring. So how did you now, when we talk about getting into our divine purpose, because we all out there have one, and a lot of women, especially single moms, you know, um, they struggle with redefining them, redefining themselves after a divorce or after even what it's not talked about, even after having children. Right. You have to find different ways to redefine yourself and not lose the essence of you right. while you're raising them or while you're going through different struggles or obstacles. Uh, that build your levels of endurance so what advice would you give to a single mom out there who is trying to to find her calling in this lifetime who who may think oh you know i'll never be more than just a mom or what advice would you how would you help her dig deep Ooh, that was a go ahead <laughs> well actually the, the the thing that i used to dig deep was my kids mm. because at the end of the day they're looking at you you're the example. Like, my biggest thing is I never wanted my children to watch TV and look at somebody else as a role model. Mm. So I played that role for them. Right. So the biggest, the biggest thing that you can do, single mom, single father, is actually be who it is that you want to be for them. Mm. Put them before you mm. to give you that motivation to move forward. Because if you try to stay within you, you'll forget them. Mm. And then they'll go to TV. Or they'll go to the streets. I love that. So you definitely, you want to be that mirror that you want for your kids. So if you have children and you say, you know, I, I want my children to go to college. Or I want my children to be, you know, to take care of me. Or whatever your goal is for your, your children. While they're growing up, teach them how to be just that. And teach them how to be themselves. Yes. Uniquely. Yes. And own And own that. it. And Look, own it. We just said it at the same you time. You own it. And speaking of that, guys. Her children, you know, they're, they're basically family at this point, and they're so into who they are. Yes. Chris has a single yes. that just came out. Oh, you can't get out of your own. And it complements the purpose. Yes. So that's something that you guys out there can also do. Her son's purpose, he's a singer. Yes. Just in case you guys didn't pick up on that. He's phenomenal. You should check him out on what is iTunes? iTunes? Spotify. I, Excuse Spotify, me. Spotify. iTunes. Spotify. Amazon. Yes. It dropped today. Get out of Hello. your own way. Exactly. Yes. But it complements the essence of the purpose. And even like my sister or a lot of women out there who I know are single moms they make their child they they first of all from an early age they show their child of a purpose like mm -hmm. you're here for something more and then it complements because that's what it is the people along the journey right are there to compliment so why not mm -hmm. have it as your children absolutely and they're here today too yes they are here and it's funny because this is the first time well not only the first time my first play that I put up in 2000 and 11 they were both there but they were younger mm -hmm. but this is the first time in a very long time that they've actually been on the road with me right. because when I took a break from playwriting I you know I was doing author mm. book work so it was just like okay let's sign some books and that was it right. but now to actually see have them here to see mm -hmm. what mommy you know has been doing or this is what mommy was doing this for or this is what you guys inspired me to do when Chris gave me the composition like everything this moment started from a composition book mm -hmm. literally it always smarts it starts with the smallest the yes. smallest step. and it just grows and I just took that book and kept running with it and you keep going you yes. run and you don't stop right you might have to no catch your breath what. a little bit but you pick it back up and you just keep going. You got to find that thing that makes you just want to run. Yes. Run into yes. something bigger. Just and for run. them. Because again, exactly. they're watching. And they are. And they. And my kids show me that. Because like you said, Chris has a single. So mm -hmm. everything that I have done that they've seen me do, now they're mimicking. My youngest son, he plays basketball. Mm -hmm. so and he, he was just in here taking pictures. Yes. So he's complimenting. <laughs> See? Yes. He's complimenting he's, the purpose. So, yes. Yeah. So when you when you live in your truth, your kids will then follow. Mm -hmm. And then they all start figuring out what their purpose is, and then they'll mimic. Mm -hmm. I love this. 
this is just so warm. Isn't it warm? Yes. This conversation is yes. warm. And we're in a theater in my home. <laughs>